Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you all for being here. I'm sorry for the uh, challenges you're going through. It's uh, hard for me to not shed tears, so I certainly understand your situation and those of everybody in the audience. Uh, Ms. Craig, I wanted to ask you a, a couple of questions. I have 11 open cases. I'm from uh, North Carolina. I have 11 open cases related to the DRC right now that seem very similar to yours. And Mr. Chair, uh, I'd uh, ask consent to add uh, information from Katie and Chad Coleman from Charlotte who are going through a scenario. It's, it's going on three years now. I think that the daughter, the two daughters were three and a half and uh, 18 months. Now they're six and going on four years old are a little over four years old. I'd like to submit that for the record. It's a very similar story. It's playing out time and time again. Ms. Craig, you said that there were 1,300 cases of which only 99 have been reviewed. Is that correct? I believe there's 400 U.S. cases. So in the 1,300, I was including all of the other um, countries as well. Okay, and of the, uh, so is it 99 of the 400? Uh, Department of State had said 99 of the 400 U.S. or 99 of the total thousand that were submitted were reviewed. Now, in, in the case of the Coleman's, they've indicated, in addition to the expenses they paid for adoption since they've been in this state of limbo, that they've spent nearly $24,000 on um, uh, extra foster care. Are you experiencing similar expenses right now? Our daughter's in an orphanage, yep. um, but we in incur uh, medical expenses above and beyond that. So. The, uh, you mentioned that the uh, parliament, I guess, gets out on December the 15th. If, if you had a, a delegation or a member who was willing to go there, what do we say to them? I think it needs to be decision makers to decision makers. Um, I'm not sure that we're meeting with the people who can. And who do you think that is? I mean, just in your the conventional wisdom of people that are dealing with the DRC, I could ask similar questions of of other panelists, but I thought I would just zero in on, on you and probably it, You know, it may those. even be at the executive level. Mm -hmm. um, I, w I, I would say it needs it needs to be decision makers. Um, are, are there or, any bright spots out there? Are there people that seem to want to do the right thing, but the I think politicians so. are not letting them? I mean, I'm you know, I'm not even sure that it's um, politicians. Um, it, you know, that's why I keep saying it's it's very unclear. Um, we're not sure where the issue is. Um, so I think if we could nail down that answer and get to who the decision maker is, and it may be President Kabila. So at the executive level, maybe it's president to president that needs to have a sit down. I'm, I'm not sure. Do you have any idea what gave rise to these uh, suspensions? Um, the initial, the Congolese initially said concerns of child's uh, safety and well-being. When, re when coming to the receiving country. Did they cite specific examples that they were reacting to and maybe they overreacted or? Um, not to my knowledge. I think they were um, con concerned over abuse and rehoming. Yep, and I'm just curious if there was any rational basis and fact that they used. So something, you know, maybe an overreaction to something that did occur, but we'll have our office look more into that. Okay. Um, the, uh, you know, I, for one, think that we probably do need to step up the engagement uh, with the DRC and other countries in terms of their behaviors, just trying to do the right thing for the kids. You all are trying to provide a loving home for these children. Um, <clears throat> in the case of the DRC, they receive uh, $176,800,000 a year in USA. 110 million from USAID and 65 million from the State Department. I mean, we're already trying to do everything we can to help the DRC for the citizens in their country, and you're trying to do everything you can to help the children in this country actually aspire to a better, safer life. And it seems to me we need to figure out a better way to communicate that. I think you're right. We need to do it. This is not a partisan thing. Uh, we need to do it in a way that engages the uh, the administration, the executive branch, but I think Congress can have a voice too, and we should probably raise that voice. And I appreciate you all being here today. I'm very sorry for your experiences. Thank you.